tell me everything you know about hepatitis C. About hepatitis C? Basically what I read in the paper, not that much. Have you ever heard of hepatitis C? No. I know it's contagious. I know there's, there's hepatitis A, B, C you don't hear too often about. Yeah, I think I had like a two or three weeks ago. The issue of hepatitis, I didn't know it was an issue. Let me tell you the story of a battle. A battle being fought by over 300 million men, women and children across this planet. And lost by more than 1 million every year. A battle has had some successes, but one which faces many obstacles. Viral hepatitis is a huge global health problem. Much needs to be done to combat these infections, and much can be done. Hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver. Hepatitis viruses are the most common cause of the condition around the world. There are five main hepatitis viruses referred to as types A, B, C, D, and E. We have to work together to win this battle by rapidly scaling up prevention, diagnosis, and treatment so that viral hepatitis will be eliminated by 2030. And here's how we're doing it. Viral hepatitis is one of the biggest public health threats of our lifetime. Worldwide, over 300 million people are living with chronic hepatitis B or hepatitis C, making it many times more common than HIV. Devastatingly, it is responsible for 1 in 12 of all cancer deaths each year. Yet the majority of these deaths are completely preventable because we have highly effective vaccines against hepatitis B and highly effective cures for hepatitis C. We have the tools, we know what to do, we just have to do it. What that means is ensuring that every infant is vaccinated, that every mother is screened, that everyone is given blood that is safe and injections that are safe, that everyone at risk has access to the information they need and the services they need and that everyone who needs treatment has access to it, and in particular, our most vulnerable people. From vaccination programs. On December 1st, an Amazonian tribe warned that it was close to extinction because of a hepatitis B outbreak. Members are dying because they have not received treatment. Awareness raising activities. We are looking at the young people. Because you guys have the power, have the money to change the world. My message is going to be out there, not only to the young ones, but to all who use needles, do not share needles, and you won't end up the same way as I did. Life-saving interventions, as Dr. Humar is ensuring happens in Pakistan. Uh, the government of Ger Germany is uh, establishing a safe blood transfusion uh, program in Pakistan. What they're planning to do is that the uh, whole blood transfusion uh, would be discontinued and the blood would be separated uh, at, into the components and these components would be moved from uh, one of the main sites to the hospitals and, and through this we would have uh, the availability of uh, clean, safe blood. Safeguarding the health of the whole community, like the work Even Evenoff is doing with the World Health Organization. There are about 35 million health workers worldwide and around 3 million of them every year receive percutaneous exposures to blood-borne pathogens. These exposures result in more than 81,000 hepatitis infections a year among healthcare workers. The main reasons for these infections are insufficient measures for the protection of occupational health and safety of health workers. But we need to do more if we're going to stop these one and a half million deaths every year. Preventing new infections is a key pillar in the strategy to eliminate hepatitis by 2030, but finding the undiagnosed is the cornerstone. Today, about 300 million people around the world are living with viral hepatitis yet remain undiagnosed. 
facing the possibility of developing fatal liver disease or unknowingly transmitting infection to others. From testing at-risk populations. My name is Rachel Halford. I'm the Deputy CEO at the Hepatitis C Trust in England. Every single person who enters prison is offered the BBV test. It's actually an opt-out question. So what the, prison of, what the prison nurses are saying is that we do this test and then right at the end of explaining it to them, they offer them the option of opting out. Hopefully what we'll be doing is grabbing more people. So let's find the people in prison, get them tested. Developing innovative ways to overcome diagnostic challenges. We developed a new test to try and diagnose HIV and try and detect the virus that could be done on a USB stick. And one of the reasons we did that was that there's a big challenge in scaling up HIV treatment. But the same challenges exist for hepatitis. And so what we're looking for is to try and use that technology to diagnose hepatitis, both B and C. And the technology we have may or may not be the right answer, but we need an answer that we can, we can use globally. And uh, whether someone does it, us or someone else, then, then it'll be a success. To raising awareness about the true impact of viral hepatitis. So NoHep is a global movement to eliminate viral hepatitis by 2030. It was launched to coincide with the World Health Organization's Global Hepatitis Strategy, which included ambitious targets to eliminate viral hepatitis by 2030, calling on all people and all governments and all medical professions and anybody who wants to be part of making the elimination of viral hepatitis our next greatest achievement, to come on board and take action. On the global stage... Hello. I'm Jackie Chen. July 28th is the World Hepatitis Day. Will you help on World Hepatitis Day? That's the 28th of July. I'm here today, ladies and gentlemen, to merely reiterate to you that I am absolutely committed to the cause of hepatitis. Immediate action is necessary because diagnosis is the first critical step toward treatment, cure, and ultimately elimination of viral hepatitis. Let's all play our part in finding the missing millions. We demand from the governments to let us know that we have a contagious disease. Basic right of the patient to know and is the obligation of the system to let him know. Thanks to the great advances in science, we now have a cure for hepatitis C, which is fantastic. However, only a tiny fraction is currently accessing treatment. That's 1.5%. And the main reason behind this, this figure has been named the high prices of the drugs. However, what we are seeing right now is that because of the competition amongst manufacturers, because of the direct negotiations that are happening um, uh, between governments and suppliers, and also due to the rise and also the availability of generics, new avenues are opening up to increase access and these prices are falling and falling fast. The Medicines Patent Pool is an initiative supported by the United Nations and it is a unique mechanism that encourages collaboration among many actors in public health to license medicines and then distribute the less expensive versions to developing countries in great need. Hazel Hill is one of those lucky individuals that have been treated by using generics. I've had cirrhosis for nearly 20 years. Uh, I was really teetering on the edge of getting close to that liver transplant list. That was the next step. Uh, when they said that, it was really the first time I became aware really that the drugs, DAAs, were available, uh, but that you'd have to buy them. Uh, for me, once I'd worked out the right prescription treatment length, it would have been $200,000. Uh, I then saw a note, in, uh, a link in the internet, and followed that and found Greg Jeffries talking about getting generic medication for Hep C from India. And in his newspaper article, he mentioned the Fix Hep C Buyers Club. I flew to Australia and picked up my medication and got started. I felt better pretty much straight away. I just improved and improved. What's happened for me is pretty outstanding. In fact, it might be a record for the redemption trial. In Australia, record numbers of people are now accessing the new hepatitis C cures. And this was made possible through very strong community-led advocacy and a $1 billion investment by the Australian government. Now all adults can access
US government subsidised treatments for hepatitis C. And this means thanks to all the no hep supporters in Australia, we're now on the road to elimination of hepatitis C. Not to mention that if we are to achieve WHO's elimination target for hepatitis C, we will need to scale up treatment massively from 1 million people a year, that's what we currently have right now, to over 50 million in a very short amount of time. And what it means is that we're going to start to have to look beyond pricing and also focusing on issues such as access to diagnostics, um, stigma and discrimination, um, support for vulnerable groups and, and, and follow-up care. Being silent about hepatitis is doing no one any favours. I think there is an incredible amount of stigma and I think that stigma probably comes from the days of hepatitis C being labelled as a disease of intravenous drug use. Apart from this, there were other also people around my surroundings that uh, knew the situation of my new situation in my health. One of them was my sister. She said to me, you know, that it will be much better for you uh, since now that you are positive to use the second bathroom that we have rather than the first one. And then I realized that uh, the, the stigma that exists in uh, the society is something that it is more devastating and can kill you even more in a more um, painful way rather than, than the virus itself. In a world where access has been restricted so much, I'm one of the lucky few individuals. After battling this horrible disease for over a decade, I'm now hepatitis C free. And this has really changed my life. But I know too well what it is like to have a treatment, a horrible and long treatment fail you. What it's like to experience self-stigmatization and all of the other fears that come with this disease and that affect very different areas of one's life. And this is why I'm here today calling on the hepatitis community and beyond to join me and to lobby and advocate for that treat all approach. Yes, treat all, a cure to a potentially fatal chronic disease and everything else that it can represent to an individual should not be a privilege reserved to a lucky few. So please, go home, be messenger for this. You need to say, I've heard about these elimination targets, I believe they are feasible and I believe we can do them, etc. So you need to please individually be messengers and saying, uh, these targets are fine, we can eliminate it, we can get over this. Former Director General of the United Nations World Health Organization, Dr. Margaret Chan said, the world has ignored hepatitis at its peril. So now we need to make up for all the time we've lost. Now we need to act. Join the thousands of people, organizations, and countries who are working to reverse this trend. Join me in saying, I am no hep. Join no hep to eliminate viral hepatitis by 2030. I am no hep. I am no hep. I am no hip. No hip Turkey. Turkey and you can get Turkish. I am no hip. I am no hip. No hip, yes sir. I am no hip. 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 No I am no hip. No sorry, no hip. Je suis no hip. No I have no hair. No hair! I have no hair. We are no hair! We are no hair!